the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 226, 1 Chronicles 10 to 12. David's two motivations. David, who was enthroned following Saul, established Israel as a God-centered community of faith in compliance with God's expectations. First point, Chronicles does not include Saul's 40-year monarchy and starts with Saul's death. 1 Chronicles chapters 1 to 9 present the genealogy of Israel and it unravels the story of the death of Saul. In other words, the story does not discuss Saul's 40-year monarchy. Saul said to his armor bearer, Throw your sword and run me through. All these uncircumcised fellows will come and abuse me. But his armor bearer was terrified and would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he too fell on his sword and died. So Saul and his three sons died, and all his house died together. 1 Chronicles chapter 10 claims that Saul and his three sons died and ended the entire household of Saul. This showed that Saul's monarchy came to an complete end. Saul's death was not caused by death during war against the Philistines, but was a result of suicide at the age of 80. Indeed, the death of Saul and his three sons was dishonorable in every way. In order to show that they had won against Israel, the Philistines beheaded and took the heads of Saul and his three sons and displayed it for people to see. They furthermore took Saul's armor to the temple of Philistine to show the people that they had won against Saul. The bodies of Saul and his three sons without their heads were displayed for the people to see and ridicule. Although he had the most dishonorable end, the people of Jabez Gilead crossed the mountains and the river to give a proper funeral to Saul and his sons. When all the inhabitants of Jabez Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all their valiant men went and took the bodies of Saul and his sons and brought them to Jabesh. Then they buried their bones under the great tree in Jabesh, and they fasted seven days. This was because Saul had previously saved all the men of Jabesh Gilead from becoming half-blind. Second point, the people of South Judah who returned from Babylon as captives after 70 years were told that the reason Saul's monarchy fell was due to Saul's sins. To the people who spent the last 70 years in Babylon as captives, the writer of Chronicles pointed out that the reason Saul's monarchy fell was because he did not keep to the laws of the kingdom of priests. Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Lord and even consulted a medium for guidance and did not inquire of the Lord. So the Lord put him to death and turned the kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. Saul disobeyed God's command and made an offering without the help of Samuel. He waited seven days, the time set by Samuel. But Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and Saul's men began to scatter. So he said, Bring me the burnt offering and the fellowship offerings. And Saul offered up the burnt offering. Just as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived and Saul went out to greet him. Saul was also greedy, but Saul and the army spared Agak, and the best of the sheep and the cattle, the fat calves and lambs, 
everything that Oscar. The dish they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. Saul, furthermore, killed 85 priests. The king then ordered Doeg, "You turn and strike down the priests." So Doeg the Edomite turned and struck them down. That day he killed 85 men who were the linen ephod. Saul also found a sham woman in order to serve an idol. He inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him by dreams or urim or prophets. Saul then said to his attendants, "Find me a woman who is a medium, so I may go and inquire of her." As such, Saul fell because of his disobedience and foolishness. Third point: One Chronicles is based mostly on the story of David. One Chronicles chapters 11 to 29 cover the story of David. David, alongside Abraham, is a representative figure in the history of Israel. Different to Saul. David dreamed of implementing a kingdom of priests, and thus was able to become a model for the next thousand years. David's records can be found in one and two Samuel's, one and two Kings, and also in one Chronicles. David's record also appears in Psalms. Out of the sixty-six books in the Bible, five of them deal with the story of David. This shows how important David is. One Chronicles, furthermore, records how David reigned over the unified Israel nation. After reigning over the tribe of Judah for seven and a half years, David finally became the king of all Israel. David made Jerusalem into the new capital city. Jerusalem had not been conquered since the days of Joshua. But David established Jerusalem as the core of a kingdom of priests and the twelve tribes. You will not get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. In 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 6, it is written that the king and his servants went to Jerusalem to conquer the place. But in Chronicles, it is recorded. That all of Israel went to conquer it. This shows that Jerusalem was for all the twelve tribes. Chronicles also records the soldiers who helped David along the way. First is Joab. David's nephew Joab became his first in command, and thirty men protected David. Fourth point: the soldiers who helped David. Before becoming king over Judah, were recorded in history. Before David became the king over Judah, there were soldiers who helped David in Ziklag. During the days David had to run away from Saul, there were four hundred people who were with him due to having similar circumstances to David. Although it was very difficult to look after them, David still took these people in. The four hundred grew into six hundred, and their families. These six hundred became David's soldiers. The soldiers were some from the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of Gath, the tribe of Judah, and the tribe of Manasseh. As such, even before he became king, David had royal followers. Day after day, men came to help David until he had a great army like the army of God. Fifth point: The soldiers from the twelve tribes who helped David reign over all of Israel were recorded in history. After reigning as king of Judah for seven and a half years, David finally became king over all twelve tribes of Israel. The soldiers who came to help David were recorded. What this shows is that the country became unified, and all twelve tribes came to support David. Among the twelve tribes, the tribe of Benjamin was the first to be recorded. If we think about it, Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin, so David could have been considered the enemy. However, David managed to bring in 
and include the tribe of Benjamin and work together. All these were fighting men who volunteered to serve in the ranks. They came to Hebron fully determined to make David king of all Israel. All the rest of the Israelites were also of one mind to make David king. The men spent three days there with David eating and drinking, for their families had supplied provisions for them. Also, their neighbors from as far away as Issachar, Gibron, and Naphtali came, bringing food on donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen. There were plentiful supplies of flour, fig cakes, raisin cakes, wine, olive oil, cattle, and sheep, for there was joy in Israel. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyango Zo has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zo is a sought-after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting-edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.